my beautiful monstera. It's called black velvet. This is called black coral. Hello and welcome. I'm Shirley and welcome to my channel, Shirley's Divine Styling. Um, I hope you've been before and, and seen some of my videos. Um, but if you haven't, I've made quite a few now so that you can enjoy yourselves and have a look through those. Um, and if you see anything that you like about the video, uh, please don't forget to subscribe and like. Um, that would be really useful. Thank you very much. Um, and to all my subscribers and people who have liked my channel, thank you too. And I hope you'll enjoy this video. Um, today I thought what I would do was I would do some styling um, and I would style a wall. Um, because obviously, you know, in our rooms we have <laughs> lovely walls, but uh, we can get, you know, everything can get a bit cluttered sometimes, and it's nice just to have everything all nice and fresh and have a change. So I've thrown everything away, or that is, into another room or whatever that I've got, and I've made a whole new, fresh approach with my plants. take this for example there's the um, embroidery here it could be a painting it could be anything like that it's nice to have some tall plants on either side so I thought I'd do that with my two beautiful plants that I have here the Eureka palm you may have seen it before in one of my other videos I featured her and um, my uh, lovely plant here uh, my Dracaena who is about 15 17 years old. I'm not really sure how she is, how many years now she's you know, had a break. Is I do love her, I'm always talking about her. Um, and then I've got a console table here, so I thought I'd put some plants on there instead of the ornaments. This is actually a, a light. It's nice to have a light, a lamp, something like that, to light up your plants for a warm glow for the evening. That is always really nice. Um, so what I've got here is um, a few more, and then Across here uh, is my window with my little tables, nest of tables, my beautiful monstera. I thought he looked quite nice in the corner. I've raised him up on a little table here, he looks quite nice. And um, some of my calpheas. Um, as I often tell people, this is George. George uh, is many, many years old. Um, he's 30, 35 years old. I've had him for a very, very long time. Um, he, as I've told other people before, he grew very, very tall. We went away for a very long holiday. Something went wrong um, and when we came back, he wasn't at all well. And eventually, I, I tried to nurse him and all the rest, but eventually I had to cut him right down. Since then, he's grown again. Um, he's become a new boy and uh, a new baby. And just look, all of his leaves this summer that were um, full, uh, with no cuts or holes or anything, um, have now started to split. And aren't they just lovely? Look at these leaves that I've been blessed with. And I have some new leaves here, can you see these? New leaves coming forth from my George. Isn't that wonderful? 30, 35 years old. He could easily be 35 years old, because I was looking at it the other day wondering, how old he was exactly but just look they're all splitting beautifully now aren't they lovely so he's filling a nice space there in the corner and these are my plants so I'll go through a few of them with you um, this one is um, a new boy this is an alocasia and he is called black velvet I'm not sure how well you can see so I'm going to come over to the light right now it's called black velvet. It has extremely dark leaves. Velvety, furry and beautiful. Um, they originate in the jungle of Borneo and they were discovered in 1860 by English plant collectors who went over to look for orchids and unusual plants. And they found uh, this one and other alocasias, as far as I know. Um, they need to be kept moist and some people say you can mist them but um, 
I wouldn't because this variety is uh, furry and velvety leaved so I don't think it would be right because they, they're just different, they're quite furry, they're soft, they're, they're um, you know like that and they're not fleshy and smooth so uh, it does say Mr Alocasias but I'm not so sure about this particular one but anyway isn't he quite lovely I've, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how big he'll grow apparently about 15 inches tall and wide so we'll see so that one I've got in here he's not supposed to be in direct light so I've put him under the sill um, because in the jungles I think he's quite covered up he just doesn't, isn't exposed to strong lights this is my um, Calathea Rosia Picta. I'll just bring her over to you. She is divine, my favourite word, as all our plants are. But some have that little extra, don't they? Just look at this beautiful ruby-like colouring. I hope you can see. And she now has a little flower hiding at the back. Can you see that? <laughs> I don't know why she's hiding, but she is. Anyway, so she's quite gorgeous, and I thought I'd put her here on a little um, turned up pot, so she's raised a bit, to keep the cascade look from the windowsill coming down over the tables to the floor, to bring the eye down or up, as you will. And of course, I have my absolutely beautiful Tread Scantia, who I've shown before in one of my other videos. I did a whole video on the Tread Scantias because they are absolutely beautiful. Um, so I'll just pop that one back there. You can go and uh, see the video to explain uh, propagation and all sorts of things. And this one, I'm not sure if you can get closer. Perhaps I should come closer to the, the light. Oh dear, once it was broken, but no matter. I'll, um, I'll have to fix that up later. Such a shame. You have to be really careful with these. But I have already prop propagated this one because I did break some of these. They, they broke off. Um, and I explain in my video um, how to propagate them. Literally, you, you do just put them in water, root them up, and then put them back in. And they bush up the top of your plants and she now she's just lost a few literally it's such a shame so bushy i mean she wasn't like this a few months ago she's really grown and so beautiful just look at that coloring isn't it just gorgeous um and this is one plant that you can put in your window and not worry about the sun she loves the sun they just do. They don't bleach. <laughs> like some plants actually bleach, don't they, when they're in the sunshine? Um, they, these don't. Now these ones I will have to clip back and propagate and then, you know, root off and put back in my pot. And then if I start another plant, I might start another plant, but you know what it's like. You get too many plants, you've only got so much room to put them. So that's that one. And then, of course, um, I have my beautiful Calathea Maranca. I'll just show you her lovely colours. She has velvety leaves. Not as velvety as the, um, the one I've just shown you, the Alocasia, but they are beautiful. And she has lovely, lovely red lines running through the leaves. Can you see that? Isn't that lovely? So I thought today, as I was doing a plant styling, I would try and sort of theme up a little bit some of these colourings. So we have the red in the Maranta and we have um, the red in the Earth Star. Little guy. He's quite beautiful. Now he was green for a long time and I couldn't get him to go red. Nothing, nothing worked. I kept thinking he was dead and then he turned out to be alive. Um, he's, uh, he doesn't need much watering at all, um, but since the sun has come out, he has gone from green to pink and now to this pinky red. So if you have, or ha you know, have one of these and it's green, put it in the sun. It loves the sun 
and it will change, it will just go so red. Obviously you could give it a bit of water, but not too much. So I'll put in here. And uh, another one um, that I have is here. My theme of the reds and uh, pinks today. Um, this one is um, a Collius. She's quite beautiful, as you can see. And uh, I think they're trending at the moment. Um, I don't know where I've got that from. Have to have a look. <laughs> These plants um, need a lot of moisture, a lot of. They're they're quite fleshy. If you look at the stems, apparently they're um, they're very like uh, the mint plants, and they they grow lots and lots of leaves. They get very quite bushy, fairly big. You know, when I say big, it's not really big. Um, and this colouring is so beautiful. Look at it; it's just so beautiful, isn't it? And um, they come from hot climates. Now you just I wouldn't. You know, I could never believe this really because I know how much moisture these plants need. Um, and they come from these hot climates, Sri Lanka, Africa, India, and there are a whole host of other places that these plants come from. And they're all hot climates. And um, they can tolerate the sun a little bit, but really it's not worth putting them on a windowsill. I, I would keep them slightly away from the windowsill so they get lots of light, but it's going to be the indirect again. But they do, they say that you can miss them. Um, they're a little bit too fleshy for my liking. I, I wouldn't want to miss them, I don't think. But they definitely do appreciate moist soil, maybe even pebbles underneath or near, maybe a mister, but not too close to it. So just so they have that, that humidity around them. But they are lovely, they are really lovely, and they're very easy to propagate, so I'll probably have some fun with this one, because I haven't had one of these in years. So I'm going to enjoy that, it's one of my new ones. So as I was saying, with Rosie um, and the trade scantiers, there's this pink theme going through, so I thought that the little, um, you know, Miranda with her in her leaves look quite nice, cascading down. Um, and this is my po golden pothos. She is um, a chartreuse. I have shown her before in one of my other videos. She's going to grow quite big and quite lovely. I'm looking forward to her. So I've put them by George. Um, and here is another Calthea. This is Beauty Star. She's quite beautiful. She's growing out of her pot you can see. So I have to repot her because it's not it's not good. But she's had this growth, sudden growth. Um, and I mean, it's quite surprising when they don't grow and then the next minute they just take off. Poof! It's quite lovely. And if you look at her leaves, you can see that the lines look kind of like star-like a bit. Shimmery quite nice. She's bushing up beautifully now. Lovely plant. I have not had trouble with my calpheas. One or two, uh, but there's a lot of them I haven't had real problems with. And it's not as though um, this room is, is that cool. The kitchen is... If you do have trouble with your calpheas, then take them to the bathroom, take them to the kitchen, somewhere where there's moisture, that is water in the air and do something about your humidity. They love to be misted, so miss them. It's a good thing to do. And this is my Tenanthi. My Tenanthi, she's very small and very, very sweet. I don't think she's going to get that big. Maybe a foot or two. She's growing quite nicely. She's got lovely, beautiful markings. Can you see her beautiful markings? I think those leaves are going to be beautiful as she gets bigger. They're beautiful now. And she's got another couple of leaves all ready to unfurl. So I think that's great. And she comes from the French Polynesian Islands. So she comes from an island. Isn't that lovely? Imagine all that beautiful sunshine and the sea and the waves and all that. This is where she comes from and she's in 
the Calthea family. So you have to think of her as a Calthea to protect her, not too much sun or uh, use a filter to reduce the salt and the chlorine. And this is my bromeliad. Uh, these grow in the American jungles and they grow on trees with orchids. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, and they grow on the floor of the trees. Growing trees as well, so oh, it's just amazing. And um, the flowers take some time to come, but when they come, they last a few good few months. Um, and then, um, after a while, the flower will die down. And once that happens, the plant itself is more or less finished, but it will suddenly pop up new, what they call pops, little bromeliads into the soil at the foot of the base of the plant itself. So I'm very keen to see this happen because I have never seen this happen and I've never had a bromeliad before. Um, so I'm sort of learning as I go with her. But um, she's a beautiful plant, she's got lovely leaves. She doesn't need excessive light, but she will need light of course. But they need it sort of dappled and shaded. My Sansevieria, I have one here on the table. Uh, I thought it would be nice to even the height of the green plants on the tabletop and then a few smaller green plants in the foreground. And you could put ornaments or a light if you want, as I have done here. All in all, um, I think it's quite nice. There are various areas in my wall here so I'm just uh, sh not sure how your wall is. You may have a sideboard. You may have a council table. Uh, this is just an idea of what you can do. So here is my Sansevieria here. She's got beautiful new leaves at the, in the centre there and she's got these lovely golden edges. She's so beautiful, fleshy, lushy leaves. I think she's just gorgeous. And of course they don't need much water at all very little. In fact, I wouldn't overwater these. I wouldn't water them once a week even. Once a month, once every three weeks. Just sort of see how it goes and see what yours likes. And also, obviously, if, if it's in full sun, it's um, probably going to need water a bit more. Now, one of her little leaves got knocked. So I trimmed off the base of the leaf, nice and clean and put her in some water to propagate her. And apparently she, she's supposed to grow some roots and then you can plant her. So I'm sure quite a few of you already know about this, but I personally haven't actually done this before, so it's gonna be new for me. So I thought, well, if you've got anything like this, you can actually put them on the side as well. So long as the water stays clear and you change your water regularly, obviously, you know, and you, you would have that. Is a, a super little succulent type plant. I can never remember the name. Similar, I think it is. Lady fingers. I have a problem with the name of this plant, but I do like her. Just look at her, she's so lovely. I did show you in my last video, which was on transforming your room or part of your room into a tropical scene. Um, so I used my palms and a couple of my plants that are known for the tropics and I gave it that nice vibe. And I thought that was really lovely. And you could see that video if you wanted to. Find that one. Um, what else have I got? My other Sansevieria is here. This one, you don't see very often, at least in England, we, we don't seem to be able to find them that often. This is called Black Coral. And she's got some beautiful baby leaves growing. Can you see those? When I bought her, I didn't realise it. I got her home and I realised that I'd got all these lovely little leaves coming up. Aren't they beautiful? And the patterns on her are quite special. She's got like a black going through her in a very special wavy way. 
it's a certain type of pattern. There is one similar to this, so you'd better sort of make sure that you've got the right plant to get the black carp. But she is lovely. There's even, there's, yeah, there's another leaf there. And um, she's going to grow really quite big, apparently. So that's going to be very interesting. I don't know how long it will take, though, for her to grow. But isn't she lovely? Even now, she's really quite beautiful. And I love these. The thought that these extra leaves are coming up so I just thought I'd show you how I've styled things. A pop of gold here and there, like I did before in my other videos. You can keep the trade scantiers on your windowsill. You do not have to worry about them in the sun. Their roots are shallow in the soil. Make sure you keep a bit of water going there. Don't just leave them. You have to give them some water fairly regularly but they're really not a problem at all. And they grow and bush up. And I have another type here. I don't think I've got it written down. I haven't even got a tag. Aren't I clever? Um, no, it doesn't say. I did, I did write it down somewhere and I've completely forgotten. But it's a different type look. It's growing with like a trunk and it's they grow quite big as well. Well, not huge, not really huge, I suppose. But just look at that. And she's had a branch, like a, almost like a little branch. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? And she's got the same characteristic colour, the beautiful lilac. And she loves the sun. No problem with the sun. Thank you. So I put that over here. I thought it was another thing that we could do. Um, like here, I put all the pinks together, and um, and then here I've got the greens. Of course, I've got my snake plant. I don't know if, if I've shown you him before. I'm sure some of you know the snake plant quite well. He's totally lovely with a beautiful pattern. Here I have a few calfias. I've got one, two, three, four, and of course, there's one in the family of calfias. And then there is, of course, my Antherium. And she is new to me, and she's absolutely lovely. Can you see the size of these leaves? And she's a pink version, absolutely lovely. Pink, dreamy, dreamy, dreamy pink. And so beautiful. And look at her. She's just popping out those leaves all over the place. They are quite big, aren't they? And I think there's going, they're going to get bigger still. But I love this colour. So with that, I think I'll call it a day. I hope you enjoyed this video with me, seeing the way that I've styled the corner and the window and the console table around a picture, a painting, something like that. Bringing the plants up and spreading them along in the centre. Even on the floor here, I thought maybe I'd put them down there because I thought they looked quite nice. They're kind of even, even if we can't. Oh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video with me. I hope that you'll join me on other videos that I might do. And with that, I'll say goodbye and I hope that you'll subscribe and like and uh, join me next time. Bye. Bye.